Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice problem with infinite series. We have 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 6 cubed plus 1 over 12 cubed, so on and so forth, all the way up to infinity, where the general term is actually 1 over n cubed times n plus 1 cubed. In other words, we are adding the reciprocal of the cubes of triangular numbers, right? So if you think about it, these are numbers like 2 is 1 times 2, 6 is 2 times 3. Actually, not triangular numbers, might be uh, half or 2 times tri triangular numbers. Anyway, something like that. You get the idea. They are consecutive integers being multiplied together. 3 times 4 is 12, and then you take the cube. 2 times 3 is 6. So the next term after 3 times 4 is going to be 4 times 5, which is 1 over 20 cubed, so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and add these numbers all the way up to infinity. Where does this problem come from? I'd like to thank Surrender Kumar for the suggestion. I think this is a beautiful problem. Thank you for the challenge. This wasn't very easy at first when you look at the problem. This kind of looks a little hard, but then when you get to the bottom, it simplifies nicely. Or does it? Let's find out. Okay, so here is what, what I'm going to do. Since our general term can be written as 1 over n cubed times n plus 1 cubed, because it's basically the cube of a product of consecutive numbers, and you can definitely cube them separately. And that's important. Because what we're going to do to the general term here is we're going to go ahead and do something on it. And that's called partial fractions. So we're going to go ahead and write this expression as a sum of fractions. But we have to be careful because you have repeated roots, n cubed. Uh, so you kind of have to consider every power starting with n. So if you just had n, the numerator is always less than the degree of the denominator. So one less usually. So it's going to look like this. The first term is going to look like a over n. But we have n cubed because of the repeated roots. We kind of have to build our way up to the third power, but without changing the numerator. The numerator is going to stay as a constant. So it's going to look like this. a over n plus b over n squared plus c over n cubed. Awesome. What's the next one? Now we're going to take care of n plus 1 cubed. It's going to be the same idea, but different constants we're going to use because we don't know if they're equal. So the first one is going to be d over n plus 1. Next one is going to be e over n plus 1 squared. And the final one is going to be f over n plus 1 cubed. So the whole idea is to make a common denominator and then set the numerators equal to each other. We're going to be looking at the equality of two polynomials for all values of n, of course. Even uh, for n equals 0, obviously, it makes it undefined. But if you write them as polynomials, it should not be a problem. Anyways, so we're going to get an equality. And how do you make a common denominator? That's probably the million dollar question here. For, for example, a needs to be multiplied by everything but n. So it's going to look like this. a times n squared times n plus 1 cubed. And then you're going to have b. b will be multiplied by everything but n squared. It's going to be like you would need an n and n plus 1 cubed. Notice that when you multiply by n squared, it's going to give you the denominator right here. And then the c is just going to be multiplied by n plus 1 cubed because it already has n cubed. And the same idea for these. And then at the end, you're going to set these equal to 1. Which pretty much means you don't have any term with n to the fifth, n to the fourth, n to the second, all the way down to constant. So everything, all the coefficients except for the constant term has to be 0. Obviously, this is a lot of work. And I did, I've done the hard work for you. Just kidding, I asked for from alpha because I was being lazy. But anyways, here's the coefficients. That's the most important part because solving this is super long and kind of time consuming. I don't know. So we could probably use a little AI there, uh, which can do the hard, dirty work for us because what is AI for, right? Okay, not for smart work necessarily. But anyways, so these are the values of A, B, C, D, E, F. And notice that there is something nice about them. Maybe if you haven't noticed, I'll show you. Go ahead and write it out. For example, a is 6. So it's going to give us 6 over n. b is negative 3, so it's going to be negative 3 over n squared. And then c is 1, 1 over n cubed. 
and then d is negative 6 negative 6 over n plus 1 you remember the powers and then negative 3 over n plus 1 squared and finally minus 1 over n plus 1 cubed awesome but we're going to make it awesomer by putting the relevant terms together what does that mean it means that for example i should take this along with this one because they're a nice pair right 6 over n minus 6 over n plus 1 let's go ahead and group those together and then i would take these two guys it doesn't matter you don't have to go in that order by the way as long as you keep track of plus and minus signs but I, i'd like to put these two together and then finally i can subtract because both of these terms are negative notice that i kind of put a minus sign here and negate the sum and i'm going to be getting this one now until this point things looked good but <laughs> when i looked at something like this what the heck is going on here like can we evaluate this sum maybe let's find out all right so how do you evaluate this sum so i kind of broke it down into pieces so we can kind of focus on this n equals one through infinity with sigma this one and this one and then at the end we can kind of plug these in right i mean you can call this like i don't know xyz maybe and then find xyz and then just you're going to be evaluating x plus y minus c at the very end right okay let's find out let's start with this one x x equals we probably need a little bit more room there x equals the sigma 6 over n minus 6 over n plus 1 and that's n equals 1 to infinity i can definitely write this as two sigmas being subtracted that's important because uh, this is a telescoping sum which means that terms are going to cancel out like crazy <laughs> that's a very informal definition but you get the idea hopefully for example and i could also take out a six but that's no big deal for example if n is equal to one you're going to be getting six over one and then six over two and so on and so forth the next term is going to start with six over two and so on and so forth everything is going to cancel out except for the first term which is six so x equals six make sense great let's go ahead and find what y is y is the difference of two cubes so it's kind of nice y is going to be n equals one to infinity let's keep it short by already subtracting these things because you know that's going to happen right i mean come on you can do that immediately so when we subtract those two things that's going to give us y and when you replace n with one it's going to give you one and then one over two cubed one over three cubed so on and so forth and then from this you're going to subtract another sum again this is telescoping so one over two cubed one over three cubed so on and so forth and now what's going to happen is that these terms are all going to cancel out we're going to end up with one super duper y equals one nice let's put it here so that we can kind of put those together at the very end right so y is equal to one x is equal to six good so far what about z z is the fun part it is this one z is equal to three over n squared plus three over n plus one squared by the way even though I called that z, I meant to use sigma n equals 1 to the infinity. I hope you don't mind. It's just a kind of loose definition. But anyways, you get the idea. This sum is not a telescoping sum. But guess what? Each of these can be evaluated separately thanks to Euler, thanks to the Basel problem. And I recently made a video that uses the Basel problem. I haven't proven the Basel sum or Basel problem. But I did use it in one of the videos, and if I can find it, I'm going to take a uh, <laughs> Oops, I just can't talk. Uh, I'll try to share it, okay? So, what is this? Uh, first of all, this one is 3 times 1 plus 1 over 2 squared, plus 1 over 3 squared, so on and so forth. Again, it's all the way up to infinity. And the second one is 3 times 1 over 2 squared, plus 1 over 3 squared, dot, dot, dot. Interesting. These sums are very similar, except... The second one is just missing one. But we can take care of that very easily. That's super duper easy. Now take a look from Euler. This is equal to pi squared over six. Hopefully you knew that, right? I hope so. And if not, go ahead and check out uh, my video. I haven't proven, like I said earlier, but you can find the basal problem on YouTube. Go ahead and check it out. Also on, I think, Wolfram Alpha. I mean, I meant to say Wik Wikipedia. Anyways, I don't know why I said Wolfram Alpha, but you could probably find it there too. Uh, so the second one is missing the one. So I would say, okay, this is pi squared over six minus one. But of course you have to multiply that by three as well. 
And now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. 3 times something plus 3 times the same thing, it's going to be 6 times that, so which is going to be pi squared, and then minus 3. Awesome. This is z, and let's go ahead and put it together, because I got x equals 6 and y equals 1, and what am I trying to evaluate? What was my sum? x plus y minus z, was that it? Yes, x plus y minus z. So this gigantic sum that I was trying to evaluate, n equals 1 through infinity, of 1 over n cubed plus n plus 1 cubed was x plus y minus z. Remember that? Uh, let's put it down here. x is 6, y is 1, and z is pi squared minus 3, which kind of makes this a positive sum, which is good, right? 6 plus 1 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10, 10 minus pi squared. In other words, that gigantic sum, the problem, that was suggested by Surrender Kumar. Thank you very much again for the idea. That sum is equal to 10 minus pi squared, and that actually converges, right? Let's go ahead and check it out. Wolfram Alpha says, yay, that's the same thing, and it's about this value, and we're happy because Wolfram Alpha was able to solve this problem. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and Keep up the good work and bye-bye.